The Labour Party governorship candidate in Lagos has said Nigerians are ready to kick out the so-called big parties in 2023. Madibo Rose Viva will be contending with the incumbent Lagos State Governor Babajide Songwolu of the All Progressive Congress APC and Dr. Olajide Adidiron, popularly called Jandor, of the People's Democratic Party PDP in 2023. While joining us to discuss the plans for the 2023 elections in Lagos is Madibo Rhodes Viva. He's the Labour Party governorship candidate here in Lagos State. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. I mean, the last time we were here, you were here, we were still contemplating about the outcome of the Labour yeah. Party. So congratulations. Thank you. It's an order. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, I listened to somebody today on the radio talking about what uh, he would do for uh, Lagos State and um, there were very many questions that came to him that, but I think one of the most serious question uh, that was raised was um, the issue of touts in Lagos and how yes. they have grown in lips and yes. mouths and yes. seemingly yes. are running Lagos. What is top on your priority list for Lagos if you become governor? I mean, um, the, transportation, the transportation sector in terms of a systematic approach to it has the agro component in it. It has the road infrastructure in it. It has um, transparency and accountability so that the amount of money we have can get us as much infrastructure as possible, as opposed to doing a bridge for the cost of four bridges, right? Um, but back to what you first said, that's a very important factor because a lot of Lagosians feel terrorized and insecure by um, people who call agri or touts. I, I, I believe that the reason why they exist the way they do is because they are almost like the fourth arm of government. They are, they are young men that are used by politicians, by government to you know, be their enforcers, especially with political um, situations, and also to generate a lot of revenue because you find that almost 120 billion is collected yearly um, by these unions and these agri rules or touts that um, it's not really accounted for. We don't know what this money is being used for by the state. So the first step is create an alternative that allows for people to be able to earn a source of living. And this is investing in human capacity development. Lagos, Lagos State is built on services. But well, unfortunately, you want to do a nice house, you get, bring in tilers from Kotonou, you bring in uh, POP makers from Togo, right? So we need to enrich the capacity and make people employable. That's something that's se severely lacking in Lagos State. Once this alternative pathway has been created, then there must be an enforcement against this and automating revenue generation so it can be collected in a transparent and accountable way that can then be used to invest in education, invest in healthcare in Lagos State. Um, so for me to come with a holistic, systematic approach, you can't just go against agrarians, go against house. There must be an alternative, um, there must be an alternative system that's set up for them to be able to make a living, mm -hmm. right? And then as in power, we must not be lazy and not do the work, but expect to have people vote for us by intimidating them or suppressing them, right? So we must shy away from that type of politics. You're a young person and, you know, um, it's refreshing to see more young people running this Thank time you. around as opposed to what we uh, have had. Uh, let's talk about youth involvement okay. in politics and how the Labour Party intends to carry young people, mm -hmm. are, are, you know, along. And again, remember, the people who are carrying out these vices in Lagos State are mostly young people. Yes. Uh, the guys who were involved in drugs, selling um, the thuggery in itself, electoral violence, these are young people. Mm -hmm. What is the plan of your um, party and you, of course, um, to really more young people as opposed to letting them be used for these vices? So um, I must say that the idea, bad news always travels much faster than good news, right? So. Yes, so there are a number of young people that are involved in drugs and crime and all of that, but there's a huge amount of people that wake up every day and bend on dignity of labor. And a lot of people are driving this movement, right? And they want to see a change, they want to see a government that is reflective of this youthful direction and youthful energy and representation. And the party is open arms to all of these people and we are embracing them, we are working with them, support groups are registering with the party on a daily basis with huge amounts of people that are coming in. And the party is listening. 
One of the reasons why it emerged was because the party listened to the pressure that a lot of young people put on the party. It was not because I had, you know, whether, whatever. The point is, young people put pressure on the party and they listened. Um, so it's, it's a party that has been adopted by young people um, for these elections. And from a policy point of view, my, my, my government will decriminalize um, the way we treat people that are on drugs, right? See, the, it's a health issue, mm -hmm. and it must be seen as such if you want to actually solve the problem. Because a lot of people go into... I, I know somebody, a childhood friend I grew up with, um, and I remember that he came... We'll see him later, like when we're much older, and when, he looks very healthy. And in him looking very healthy, we know he just came out from prison. Mm. But then he's picked up again, and then by the time he's picked up, he's looking very skinny. He goes into prison, he comes back out healthy. And it continues, that cycle continues, right? So we must look at this as a rehabilitation problem. And there must be a lot of empathy with government so that we can actually have a long-term process that creates, you know, more valuable or people that can actually work, with, work in society and thrive in society, you know? Because you'll find that a lot of politicians send these drugs into communities. A lot of politicians send these drugs into local governments so that they have these people that they can easily control and manipulate for the purpose of politics and elections. So you're blaming the rise in use of drugs on politicians? Uh, it's, 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 it's interest, right? There are people bringing these drugs into the society, right? And, and there's a lot, there are a lot of interests that are involved in all of this. But I'm saying that I know for a fact that when people send thugs out to go and implement certain things in relation to politics, they send drugs. Hmm. Interesting. Let's talk about the let's talk about infrastructure. Um, Lagos is more like the Big Apple in Nigeria, mm -hmm. so everybody comes here. When people are looking for you know better life, they they flock to Lagos. Yes. Um, we've noticed that the the certain parts in Ikoyi where there are yeah. uncompleted buildings, mm -hmm. and there are lots of people who have taken over these uncompleted buildings and used it as a den f to mm -hmm. rob people. So the mm. people are being attacked, you know. Um, uh, what's, I can't remember that part in Ikoya. The, the name actually um, has gotten out of my head. But what are we doing to make sure that security is not just tightened in certain areas, but it's tightened across? Before now, when you hear about insecurity, it seems a bit far-fetched because it's not necessarily close mm -hmm. to home, but now it's here with us. Yes. Um, We've also seen that with the cancel or the, the banning of Okada, there's been a reduction in certain level of mm -hmm, crime. Mm -hmm. But what can you do to better that? Okay, so you asked a very interesting question because you linked it with um, uncompleted buildings. So there must be a policy where government can partner with a building owner to reduce the amount of uncompleted buildings in Lagos State, especially if it has gotten to a certain level and especially if it's a security hazard for the state, because there's an opportunity cost to that, right? So this is the vision or direction that the government will be going in, my government will be going in. But then bringing it back to security, I feel that once we create an alternative means for people to earn a living in Lagos State, that, so when I say that, I'm talking about improving employability, improving capacity to actually do work, because there's a lot of demand the problem in Lagos is we cannot find people that are good enough to actually do things properly. So create that kind of situation. Secondly... And how do you create that situation? Skill acquisition programs, right? And not skill acquisition programs that are just on TV and look good on TV. It's about going into communities and creating these policies with them. So, for instance, you go to a place like Badagri. You're going to be doing school acquisitions that tie into things that are readily available, right? There are people that are exporting briskets coal to England, and they are burning and processing off coconut shells, right? This is peculiar to that particular local government, and this can be very, this can be an industry that has a significant value chain, right? So it's approaching problems like that. You're not making policy for people; you're making policy with people, and. Those will be peculiar to each local government. The kind of skill acquisitions you want to be doing in Ekpe and Ikurudu that might have to do with the aquaculture will be very different from skill acquisition you'll be doing in Badagri, right? Or doing in Ojo. So, but back to what I was saying about security. 
we need to create a situation where we have rings of surveillance in Lagos State and also empowering local governments to be data gatherers. And this goes to your question about Okada, because you talked about that as well. Yes, crime has reduced, but there are still places in Lagos State that you cannot get to if you don't have a bike. And the walk is a torturous walk. So the idea will be, how can we create a system that people can register at the local government level? And bikes can be color-coded so they cannot even leave a ward. They cannot operate outside of a particular ward. And all the details, biometrics, are collected by that local government. So we're no longer having a local government that is just um, subcontractors for mm -hmm. a political party. We have a local government that is gathering data security data, is gathering data of the bike riders. So you have to have very competent local government chairman so that if anything happens in that local government based on a ring of surveillance that's also there, we can apprehend this person, hmm. right? So that's the kind of sophistication that Lagos needs to get to now because the Lagos that we have today is not Lagos we need now. Hmm. It's severely backwards, right? And you have to understand that the population is consistently increasing and in a place where you have the smallest footprint with the largest amount of people, there's always going to be conflict and confrontation. And we need a secure Lagos for Lagos to operate on a 24-7 basis. Finally, let's talk about taxation. Yes. There's several taxes. The most recent, which is um, the parking. Outside your house. Yes. Um, it's my property. The land around it is my property. So the question is, what's the sense in that? And... and, and being that there are several taxes that we're paying already Multiple. in Lagos, um, and half the time you're unable to ascertain who's taking what monies. Exactly. What, what will your government be able to do to address that issue? The main thrust of my government will be to ensure that you have a direct benefit to taxation. Whatever taxes you pay, there must be a direct benefit. Either you're immediately enrolled on a primary health care program or health insurance program, you have access to getting on a credit system that rewards you based on proper management of finances. You can transparently get on the housing ladder that allows for you to have access to affordable housing that will be distributed on a lottery basis, accountably and transparently. There are benefits. If you are a market woman that has a child in the market, you have access to a creche where you are getting the same quality of education that a child that is going to St. Saviour's is to be getting because we have technology now. Technology evens out the whole playing field. So the fact is, my government will focus on allowing every citizen to feel an incentive to pay their taxes. And the current taxes system that we have here, there's no transparency, there's no accountability, social contract is dead. And now they are piling it on more, even when they know how hard Nigeria is for most people. And that, that is very bad. That is very bad. Well, not acceptable at all. Well, in the we, Lagos that we're trying to build. What, we're looking at what's coming in the next few weeks when, yeah. you know, the campaigns begin in earnest yeah. and um, how much jaw-drawing is going to happen. It's but going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. We wish you all the best. Well, um, Badebo Vivo Rhodes is the Labour Party governorship candidate for Lagos Day. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. For all right. Me. And that's it on the show tonight. It's been Plus Politics. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. I am Mary Anakon. Have a good evening.